Dear Elizabeth, my name is Keon Benton, and I'm from the downtown section of Elizabeth, New Jersey. With the lack of resources, employment, and role models in urban communities, some people turn to the streets to provide for their families, but not by choice. Everyone watching this docu-series especially the teenagers. I hope and pray that you are listening and able to learn something from this story because this project was put together for you. Meet Miss Paulette and her oldest son, Chris Jones. They lost their son and brother, Earl Quan Moore, to gun violence in 2015. To feel as though Earl was set up by a close friend, she'll let you know you don't have any friends in these streets. So why be a part of them? Paula Jones, my son was Earl Quamore. Uh, my name was Christopher Jones. Um, the oldest brother of Earl Kwan Moore. Um, real lively, full of life, real funny. Hard-headed at times, but he was um, good-hearted, real good-hearted. Had a great spirit, you know. Um, everybody loved him, so, you know. It was rare to find somebody that didn't love him or like him because he just was a, a likable person, you know. He was my little brother, you know. Earl was bad, not a bad kind of bad, you know, but he was funny, he was silly, he was crazy. <laughs> he just make you laugh. He want to make people laugh, he want to make people happy, and he liked to help people. He loved cookouts, he loved to go to family things, and he just, just was silly. And anything he could do to help you, he'd do. Someone uh, he looked up to? Chris. Chris, okay. Gerard, almost everybody. Mm. You know, Earl loves his family. So my next question, push the conversation further. Was Earl gang affiliated? I believe so. I believe so. I didn't like it. I don't approve of it, but I believe so. I was hurt because Earl was always the one that said he didn't believe in the gangs and you shouldn't be in the game. You know, he always was against it. But then I was told that the only reason he did it because of his other brother was in the game and he didn't want nobody to hurt his brother. That's what I was told. When I asked him, he always denied it, so I don't know. Yeah, he was. Um, I mean, it made me feel, you know, kind of like I failed him. Kind of, you know, simply because I've always tried to lead by example with my little brothers. I've I've made mistakes myself, but I've always tried to, you know, make sure that I, you know, kept a job, you know, I, you know, stayed in school even when things was going off course. I went to college just to try to lead by example to just show my brothers, you know, different. So I was, you know, I was kind of hurt by it. I was upset, but, you know, I just tried to educate him the best way I knew how once I found out what he was a part of, you know, being that, you know, it happened and I know... You know, I'm very familiar with things that occur in the street, so I know what can happen if you try to leave these things or they never end well. May 23rd, 2015. Um, I was in the house with the kids. My daughter was about to get her hair done. He came here with his girlfriend, his fiance. He told us that they just got engaged that day. And um, she was going back to where she lived at to get her check. And he said he wanted to spend time with his mother. So he stayed here. So he was in the house and a couple of friends came and, so-called friends came and got him. 
And um, he said he'd be back. He came back because I was supposed to make him something to eat, but some little girl was here and she was hungry, so I gave his food away. And when he came back, he said, Mom, why would you do that? I said, she was hungry. So he said, all right, I'm going to play basketball. I'll be back. And that was the last time I saw him. I was staying here at my mom's house at the time I was living here. And um, that morning, I had uh, I left out to go to my grandmother's house to do something for my grandmother. So on the leave out, I seen him. That was the last time I, um, I seen him. I just, you know, um, said what's up to him, asked him where he was going, whatever. He told me he was going to South Jersey. And I think he had came back after that with his, um, with his lady friend at the time. And, um, you know, just a normal greeting. Um, so when I when I went to my grandmother's house, I was there doing what I was doing for her. And I actually was on my, when I found out, when I got the call, I was on my way back to the house. I was on my way, I was in a cab on my way down here. And um, I got the phone call and then... Um, I had the cab re like redirect and take me uh, to the hospital when I got the phone call. But as far as like feeling funny that day, I can't say that I did. But um, you know, prior days before that, you know, I just I didn't like the airy feelings that I had leading up to that. Yeah, it just felt funny the whole day. It just felt like something was wrong, but something was gonna happen the whole day. I just didn't know what it was, but I felt kind of funny the entire day. Yes, before he even came out here. Something was different about the day. Actually, you know, um, when the conversations that I did have with people, it was basically me saying that I didn't want anything to happen to my brothers because, you know, my brothers would talk to me about the things that was going on and in the streets and things of that nature. So I just wanted them to, you know, keep their head on a swivel and be on point and just, you know, basically watch the company they keep because that's like, you know. I feel like that was me. That ultimately, part of me played a part in my brother's demise. The company he kept. So I asked the Jones family, "What happened?" I think my opinion that his friends. Not all of them, but maybe one of them might have set him up. That's what I believe. Because he was going to play basketball, and then his friend was going to sell a phone, and then just somebody just come and just shoot, and he gets shot, and everybody running. You know, it didn't sound right. I didn't believe it. Well, we came to get him that day. And he told my mom he was going around in the corner to play ball over here at the park. But he, I don't think he, he never even made it to the park. Because he got killed across the street from the park. So he never made it to the park. He walked over there. I guess he was over there talking to whoever he was talking to. And the person, supposedly the the, 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 the shooter, came from like out of a yard or something or out of a, a alleyway. Like somebody got him in place to talk to him. All right, we're going to have him here. Bring him here. Like somebody said, bring him here and, you know, we'll finish. We'll, you know, take it from there. So I feel like it was that kind of thing. I, it definitely was a setup. It's definitely, yeah, um, like, hands down. No, it was a shut up. How does that make you feel? That hurts even more. You know, mm -hmm. that hurts even more because, you know, as as we grow up and we go through life, you've always, we've always been informed of snakes. Snakes, people who don't mean us any good, conniving, just, you know, real, you know, scum, scumbag people. The fact that I couldn't be there to help them. Um, it, it, it broke my heart. Um, were they able to find, I guess, the killer, the shooter? I don't know. They don't, they didn't say they found them, you know. They just said they had leads and yeah. things of that nature. How has things been for you and the family? It's hard. Like, some days I'm okay. Some days I stay in the room and cry. Some days I'm depressed because I deal with depression, for one. Mm. I've been doing that. And it seemed like it got worse since he died. And I don't want to do anything. Like, some days I don't want to get out of bed. I don't take my insulin like I should. I don't go to the doctor like I should, you know. And there's some days that I didn't even want to be here no more, so. But I know I got to be strong for the other kids. Right. So. I don't know. 
it's hard, you know, because every day, like, it's something different. Like, everybody miss Earl, and, like, you might go in somebody's room and catch them crying or thinking about Earl, you know, or come in my room and I'm crying or looking at his picture or something. Or sometimes you can't say his name around them. Or you can't bring up something that has something to do with him because everybody starts crying. And it's different because, like, everybody's not close like they used to be. Everybody used to be close and tight. We used to do things together. Nobody want to do nothing. Nobody want to go nowhere, you know. And everybody used to love going to family out. So nobody like that no more because Earl's not here. So it's a lot of difference. And Earl's the life of the party, so <laughs> it's not the same no more. Oh, man. I'm just, it's, it's been rough. It's been rough simply because I guess the position I play. Being that I'm the oldest, you know, and I'm his brother, I often feel like I often blame myself. And, um... It's tough, man. Like, it's tough. My my mental state now, I think um, it's it's better than, cause you know it's it's been, you know, um, two years, like almost approaching three years since my brother died. So my my mental state since since then, it has gotten better. But you know, I have I have my days and um. When I'm deep in my thoughts and, you know, it bothers me. It always It's always going to bother me because of the way it happened. I think that's never going to change. You're like, when you lose somebody and the, the way you lose them, it's different if someone was sickly. You know, it still hurts. Don't get me wrong. It still hurts. It's still painful. But when somebody was murdered, I think it's a it's a, it's a a different kind of pain. Because I often text the counselor, but nobody want to go. But, you know, everybody, it's just different. Because I did go one time, and they talked about stuff that didn't have nothing to do with, you know. Mm -hmm. Not saying they got to be focused on him, because a lot of people that lost their son. But it should be focused on all of us, and y'all talking about other stuff. So I went, and I didn't go back. Was there ever a proud moment you shared with Earl? Earl was different when he come... You know, like, Earl used to come to me and say, Ma, let me hold something. I ain't gonna tell the other kids. And I gave him $100, and he'd run downstairs and be like, look what Mom gave me. Just think about little things he did, like how he made people laugh, him dancing, or just, you know. Or one time, let me tell you this story real quick. We went somewhere, he had got a check, and I took him to cash it. So he said, I'm, I'm gonna do dinner tonight. So he brought um, two buckets of tuck fried chicken and all the stuff to go with it. So I said, I got, and he gave me money to put in my son's account. So I said, okay, I'm going to go handle that. You meet me at the house, save me some chicken. So I get home, ain't no chicken left. And I said, Dad, y'all ate all the chicken? She said, my Earl seen some guy on Broadway. He was hungry. And Earl gave him some food. And then Earl said he brought his friends over there and told him that Earl was his cousin. So Earl gave a whole box of chicken out. Mm. You know, he, that was him, stuff like that he did. Yeah, um, you know what's crazy? Um, I want to say it's it's actually two, but one of them it was like um, and they both happened. What's crazy is they both happened the week before he passed. Um, the first moment was um, I was at work right here at the center downtown First Street. I was at work and they was doing a um a community event. So it was like on an early Saturday morning. They was doing a community event and I seen him with his friends. His friends, I don't know they, what they was doing. They was doing something where they was cutting up. And I seen them. I cursed them out. <laughs> and um, I seen them, I cursed them out. But lovingly. You know, not maliciously. Just, you know, you know that's my brother. You know, I mean, if, if I don't say nothing, who will? You know, um, I'll talk to him or whatever. He runs home and, uh, and told my mother what I did. He runs home and told my mother what I did. And I, instead of me getting mad... I found it funny, so I want to say the next day, um, he was he came in the house, whatever. We were sitting right here on the couch, um, talking, and he just was telling me, you know, he needed my help. He was trying to um, do some different things. He was trying to get, you know, get his um, license, get his ID renewed. He was trying to um, get a job, you know. He he just was trying to, you know, was seeking to better himself. And you know, I was sat here, I had my arm around him, and he fell asleep in my arms. And that was like, you know, like, probably like, yeah, like a week before you passed.
Why do you think the gun violence continues in Elizabeth? Well, some people think that makes them tough. You know, people to know that they can shoot or they're a shooter. And ain't nothing cute about that. Because you're not only hurting the people you done killed, but you're hurting your family too. Only difference is you can always see your family. They can come see you. I can't go see my son unless I go to the grave site. You know, a lot of people look up to their big brothers that's out there in the streets that got guns. They get, they be fascinated by it, you know, and think it's okay. You know, then they want to do it. And then you got some, you got older people, older guys encouraging the young boys to go out and do this and shoot people. And once they, you know, get a gun and they get a name and a rep, they good. Well, my son don't do this, my son don't do that, and they don't care because their son bringing them money and doing stuff for them. So why, if he's paying my bills, why say something? And like Earl, Earl used to get Social Security plus Earl worked at Housing Authority. Earl gave me his whole check to pay the bills, to pay the rent, plus some of his Housing Authority check. I used to tell him, Earl, take your money, but that's the type of person he was. But if he was out there shooting people and selling drugs, I wouldn't have wanted it and I wouldn't have took it. But everybody's different. So maybe people step up. Community leaders, whoever, will try to get the guns off the street. Until they do that, it's going to be a lot more killing. People must start to appreciate the struggle. It's where you learn most about yourself and others around you. Turn into the streets for survival. It can be the quickest route to death. How about you challenge yourself to learn more about what you really don't know about? Once you realize you have taught yourself some knowledge or skill, you will begin to feel like you can achieve anything you put your mind and heart into. You just have to stay focused on the important things in life, which are achieving personal goals, and later on in life, taking care of family. There are some families who are less fortunate to stay motivated through the tough times. But you can't give up. You have to want to better yourself. So all those times you wish for better days can come true. I will never say that progress is being made. If you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that's the blow, that the blow made. And they haven't even begun to pull a knife out, much less try and pull, uh, heal the wound. You have, have you have, they won't even admit the knife is there. Word. This for all the Panthers that rise. Word. I'm unforgiven since Dr. King was shot. Word. To the game, I love everything that Malcolm bought Salute. Teaching us everything that Elijah taught Word. 60 years on the front line, Mr. Farrakhan Salute. Showing us that this a race and not a marathon yeah. Codeine and pills, them the scripts you on yeah. Damn, America the new Babylon Word. Celebrate every day that a side of escape I ain't shed a tear at my mama, father, wake Thou right, curse those that curse thy mother How you say you love God, don't even love your brother Yeah, but everything on the set, though Till them crackers grab you, get you to flip on your set, though Use a gun for my knowledge, I got a clip for Can't raise your child, but you can raise up a pit bull I know, I know Still Ooh, don't tell me you a good father and you don't have any community interest, no community concern. Because once you provide a child with life, then you gotta look at all aspects of life and become intimately involved with the development and nurturing of that. Yeah. 
You still chasing bags, you ain't catch them already Word. Gang, 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 that's like these niggas' whole vocabulary gang. They don't listen to hoe, they still posting the money Racks to your head, where I'm from, couple hundred is money Word. They counting them twenties, captions, I'm supposed to win but you don't own the house that you posting in Hove told you he ain't know what else to say what? I'ma tell you it's okay to go every minute You'll never be a happy woman dogging your man out You still a real nigga He's not a man yet, but he will you be But if you keep on dogging him, you won't have you nothing nigga And nigga you'll end up being a lesbian at home you with yourself With no man And a man can't live under that because he got enough hell on his head as it is trying to function in a white man's world. And he needs a wife that has compassion and understanding and that's the value of the MGT. The MGT is supposed to make you a woman to help you make a man for God.